What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and in today's episode I'm going to show you how I built the all-new full-size Chud box for Leroy and Lewis because it is finally time to replace the very first Chud box I ever built about six years ago. Coming up! All right, I think that's all the work I need to do here because I don't feel like bringing my table or the chop saw to the chud shop where the rest of the chud box is. So, got the grates, handles, all sorts of good stuff. It's time to load up the truck and head to the chud shop. All right, we have made it to the chud shop and that's mostly because that's where this chud box steel got dropped off and it seemed a lot easier to bring the welder here than bring that back. But, got all the pieces I just made, all the hinges and everything else we're gonna need is over there. Got all my gear brought in and this is where we're at. So basically what we got here is two pieces of steel that I had bent and laser cut up. Well, water jet cut. So one piece is side, front, side, just bent in a big U. We had the lip bent in, doors, cut out, thermometer holes put in, and then the other piece is the bottom and back. So that's one bent piece with the lips as well. And just a minute ago, I came in here with bones and we did a lot of finagling to try and make sure this thing is perfectly lined up, which can be a bit difficult because there's a lot of bend in the steel. This is a 3 16 inch thick steel, so not nearly as bad as eighth inch or something like that. But once everything was lined up looking good, I went ahead and I tacked these corners, sanded those down and put a bunch of tacks in the corners to make sure that this thing is now a solid box. And you may be wondering about why there's three doors on this thing. And that's because this is replacing the original Chud box at Leroy and Lewis on their smoker trailer. The one they've got there is like six years old. It was made in three hours. It was never meant to be a permanent fixture. And we finally got around to building another one for them. But because of the layout of that food truck, the way they put their coals in and the way they walk down the trailer, they thought it would be a lot easier to have a door on this side so they can kind of come at it straight. And as well as two doors on this side for easy cleaning and side access. It'll make a lot more sense once we actually get it into the trailer. So next up on this build is I need to go through and weld all the seams. So that's an open seam, that's an open seam, the whole front, the whole bottom, and then this side. And that's not only for structural reason, but also for air tightness. You know, we don't want smoke leaking out the sides. And yeah, that's a lot of welding, but it's nowhere near as much as if we didn't have these pieces bent, you know, because this is one bent U, that whole vertical and that whole vertical don't need to be welded, which is great because I used to build these out of just squares of metal and everything had to be welded. So work smarter, not harder. And once we get that done, we'll flip it over, get the wheels on, get the frame on the bottom, get the side handles, doors, lids. <laughs> We're just building a chud box, folks. Maybe wondering why I'm welding in this weird corner over here. And that's because that's where the steel got dropped off and uh, this makes life easier. But I don't want to weld in a closed room. So on this 108 degree day, I got to open the door. That ought to do. At least we got a breeze. Good. What do you think? Are we done? That's it. Open airflow concept. Nice butt. <laughs> Bones! Will you go flip the breaker? Yeah. This is gonna get old. Thank you. What? Disconnect this freezer that's connected to it. And that, <laughs> yeah, you see, that's why we keep you around. <laughs> so I'm not gonna lie, folks, this is not going well. It's been a couple hours and I have been trying my damnedest to get these seams welded up, but we kept popping breakers, which is why I often don't weld at the chud shop. As many outlets as there are around here, power is not quite sufficient. So we unplugged everything on the circuit, no fridges, no fans, turned all the lights off, 
and that worked for about 12 seconds. And then the welder started popping its little uh, fuse every three inches of bead, which is not ideal. I think it's probably because it's extremely hot outside. And this guy's pissed. Look at him. He's just trying to get work done for the chud shop. And I got the door wide open, filling this place full of fumes. But so far, we got that side done. We got this side done right now. And I just finished this one. And as you can see, it starts strong and just gets scraggly and lame. My little Miller here, not doing the job, which is unfortunate. And at this point, I'm not bringing the whole operation back to my house where I've got more power. So I think we're just gonna kind of have to wrestle through this. I'll see you on the other side. Ugh. Bones, will you get my helmet for me? Thanks, Dad. It's real far. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And that's about as far as we get. All right, finally, all the seams are done. Only took a couple hours right there, Nick. Yeah. Hey, Mal. Luckily, Mal showed up with some beautiful tandoori chicken. Thanks, buddy. All right, folks, welding is done, so now it's time to try and flip this thing over. Bones will now attempt by himself while I watch. <laughs> One, two, three. Oh, you welded it to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> well, the amount, of the amount of paint smoke coming up, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, oh good. That'll buff right off. We should have used that momentum to flip. Why don't you come over here? I'll lift it by this door and you can grab underneath. I feel like I can Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, that, was oh, that, that was way easier. You're right. This is gonna be hard though. I got it. I got the door on this side. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 now my biggest concern about having to weld this kind of two inches at a time due to the overheating welder is that leaves a lot of room for little pinholes that Grease could escape from. And looking at it, you kind of see the burn through. Like, that worries me, that worries me, that worries me. So at some point here, I'm gonna have to uh, make sure everything's looking all right. Maybe fill it with some water or something because we don't want that to leak all over the place. Pain in the butt. And as we were just saying, some of the paint on the floor came up with this thing. There's some burn marks looking good, but you know, that's what makes these builds interesting. So now it's time to put on the bottom frame, some insulation and the wheels. What a fit. Beautiful. I'll get more comments if I don't wear safety gear. My fingers! Still overheating. All right, it is now right around 7.30. I expected to be done with this entire build by now, but again, fighting the heat, fighting the welder, we've just got the framing done. Great. And basically this is just a 1.5 inch square tube all the way around the exterior. I've got some nice little welds in there. This is really just to help reinforce the bottom because it's such a wide piece of metal that if you put fire in one spot, it might tend to warp the steel, which would not be ideal. So this is just some bracing to go in there. And now we're gonna fill this gap with some insulation to help make the bottom insulated, which will promote heat upward to make this thing a little bit more efficient. This is just some ceramic fiber blanket, very common stuff for insulating fireboxes and whatnot. It should add a nice little layer of heat protection. And if you can't find this stuff, rock wool from like Home Depot or Lowe's works well as well. Beautiful. Time to put on the top plate. Beautiful. Almost got all four wheels tacked in place before it overheated. All right, y'all, we're finally back at the chud shop trying to finish this pit that's been taking a very long time because of this whole welder situation. And also, we've been kind of busy. Buzz, did we go to Europe since I started this build? Uh, yeah, I think that was this year. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> a month ago. <laughs> I think I started this in August. So it's now October, end of October, and it's time to get this thing knocked out. So since I've seen you last, I did put this side door on, which is a pretty simple process. And now, got it flipped over again, and we're gonna get these two doors on. The only problem is when we had this bent up and cut out. We put little notches so it can sit right in there and be perfectly straight, perfectly aligned, but they put the holes on the wrong side. So I drew some with Sharpie here and here, and now I need to drill some holes and hope for the best. Good, right? Uh -huh. 
good. <laughs> good job, bud. Thanks. All right, doors are finally on after several restarts of the welder. Power went out for a minute too, that was exciting. But finally got these doors done. Got the door on the side done as well. Again, that'll make sense later. But now it's time to flip this thing back over, which is always fun. You wanna flip something really heavy? Really? Gonna be a little more difficult than the way down now that the doors are on there. I'm thinking just pure strength and not put much thought into it. Best part is it's even heavier now. Ready? Nope. That wasn't that bad. Nice. Now what you need to do is put the lids on backwards. Great time. Looking good. Time for the lids. Nice. All right, y'all, this chud box is starting to look like a chud box. Got the thermometers in on all sides. All three of these firebox doors are done. I threw some handles on the side to make this thing a little easier to load and move around. Maybe you can hang your tongs on it if you want. Just install this little latch system so you can open one door or both doors. And we've only got one handle on this thing because the way this is gonna be situated on the trailer, no one's gonna be able to reach that side. So this way, if you're just doing some chickens or something, you're only using one side of the pit. You don't have to lift this super heavy door every single time. But if you need to load a pig, you can link them together and open them both up. But yeah, this thing is looking good. Very much close to being done. I got these on there, just some wing nuts and some bolts holding those on so you can tighten it down so these don't go swinging all over the place. And the last thing to do is put some door stops on the back, but I'm alone here for the moment. So I'm gonna need some help. Someone needs to hold those doors up so I can tack on these horseshoes I've got over here. And that'll stop the door from swinging all the way back. So as soon as Bones gets here, we'll get this thing knocked out. Then all we gotta do is fire it up. Two, three. Oh, you guys are doing great. Wheel locks off. Wheel locks are off. I can't believe you guys got this into the back of a truck. We had a little help. It helped a lot. I didn't get the call in time. Oops. I think we need two people in here lifting up. One, two, you guys go for three. You guys go for three. Ah, fuck! Come on. Ah! Together. One, two, three. Ah! Oh! One, two, three, three. Woo! I love you! That's not light. How you doing, buddy? Need to go back to the chiropractor. <laughs> How did it look under here when you took the old one out? Oh, it was awful. Should we open the doors? Things, let's the open doors. the smoke. Uh, wait, let's... Not gonna lie, I was super nervous. If this was gonna fit through that door. Luckily, when I built this smokehouse, I made that door that wide on purpose for this very moment. She fits. I love this. Nice. Oh, and that's why we have the three doors. You come in this way with the coals. And it was uh, probably gonna be a pain in the butt if you didn't have that side door. It was a pain in the butt. How are you feeling? Nice. What do you think that thing weighs? Exhausted. I don't know. Nick said about a thousand pounds. Yeah, I would go with that. That's what I would reckon too. Yeah. <laughs> Not too bad. 250 each. New John Box! Woo! New John Box! Let's go! It doesn't wow. quite fit with the uh, aesthetic of the rest of this place, yeah. but <laughs> All right. it'll it get too there. good. Time for a midday beer. Yes. Coming up! <laughs> that looks so good. Yup. Yeah, I'd say the new one looks a little bit better than this old look one. At, look at this one too, like from oh just sitting in the God. corner for so long and never being used. Oh yeah, because we couldn't reach it. Yeah, it was over there on the far side. This handle looks a little bit worse. Yeah, it's definitely been well used. To be fair though, this chud box was never meant to do what it did. That was supposed to be just for like events and taking to parties and stuff. But then five years went by. Mom, you wanna cook some shrimp on that thing? Let's do it. <laughs> shrimp! Shrimp! <laughs> How do you think that one's gonna compare to that one? I think it'd be more efficient, the heat will be more insulated, easier to cook. Um, I think the two doors will be really nice too. Yeah, kids. more convenient for... You'll need both doors for hogs, but for like chickens and stuff. Yeah. Be nice. Now we just gotta replace this big rusty thing. <laughs> Something tells me that door is never getting used. 
No more chains on the door. The last one had a magnet system on it and those died immediately. So there's a chain that they would hook on this thing. So yeah, big improvement. Evan, what was the worst part of uh, getting that from the chud shop into the truck? Lifting it into the pit trailer. That was the hardest that, part. That was worse than the truck? That was worse than the truck. The truck's a lot higher though. Yeah, but we like used the leverage and like had multiple people. Like when we were pulling it into the pit trailer, it was just me and you lifting on that side. So yeah. that was, and it was like lifting from the ground which was further down than where we were standing oh uh, yeah so it was hard to and also two rather wide dudes in a small wide space. dudes you were only using one hand so i had to do most of the lifting we, we'll, we'll slow it down you can see it go like this shout out to dr brian clark discover chiropractic <laughs> so first cook tomorrow <laughs> first cook tomorrow <laughs> I agree goals with opening tomorrow i agree with that shout out yeah dude dr brian dr. clark yeah. he's the best shout him out what's up <laughs> save me too <laughs> this video is brought to you by <laughs> <laughs> it's the next day, first day in action on the old, well, the new Chud Box, I should say. It looks like it's working pretty well. Happy about that. And already starting to get nice and greasy, although it still looks a hell of a lot better than that other one. Got some whole hog on there. Looking very nice. Also, I love the fact that I can lift that door with one hand. Glad to see it's working. It's not often I build a pit for here without burning it out and testing it first, but uh, seems to be doing the job. Day one, how's the new Chud Box working? Oh, I fucking love it. <laughs> it's incredible. Clayton, will you make me the last pulled pork sandwich I'll ever eat off of the original Chud Box? Yes, it would be a pleasure, an honor, and a privilege. <laughs> Fantastic sandwich as always, and it just goes to prove that you don't need the most beautiful pits to make really good food. I mean, if this ugly pile can make top five in the state barbecue, then nah. It really is the pit master, not the pit, I suppose. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how I made the brand new Chud Box for Leroy and Lewis. Very excited and meaning to replace that thing for years at this point. And uh, yeah, it took me about six months to build that pit start to finish, which is why I don't build pits anymore, you know? I got a lot of flack from people who are upset that I now outsource all the building to a new company to build all the Chud Boxes and whatnot. But uh, this just goes to show you, even one of my best bud asked for a new pit, it takes half a year to make it. So uh, that's why I'm very happy to be working with my new friends up in Dallas. But all that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you build a Chud Box for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.